Good evening, Restoration House Hamilton. Thank you for joining uh, this wonderful conference uh, tonight, uh, the Healthy Christian uh, Conference with our senior pastor, Pastor Olayin Kadada. Uh, to kickstart this, this seminar tonight, I would like to invite our, our pastor, Pastor, Yin, pastor Tony Dada, to um, lead us in the opening prayer. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we exalt your name and give you praise. We say thank you for tonight. Thank you for the new year. Thank you for your health that you've given unto us for the heart of life. We give you praise. We magnify your name. Lord, we ask of you tonight that you teach us through your Holy Spirit as your son. Lord, enlighten us over our health. We pray that we'll, in this year, 2021, the information we receive tonight will make us prosperous, even in our health and our well-being. We give you glory, our Father, and we say be exalted. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Tony. Um, Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, before I bring up our, our pastor, I would like to mention that we would have a time for questions, uh, question and answer after pastor's session. So if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, put them on the chat box. And after we're done with pastor's session, we'll go through the questions. So without wasting any further time, join me as I welcome uh, Pastor Ryan Kadada. Thank you, Tamide, for the kind introduction. So tonight, we want to look at the Healthy Christian, the Healthy Christian. And we're not doing this uh, because of grants or honorarium from anyone. So we're just doing this to empower the body of Christ. I love to start by showing my family, my wife, our son, and our three daughters. Uh, we are called United Nations because the six of us came from different countries of the world, and we are one. This is me in the hospital I practice. I finally settled to practice in Ontario, and I've put up on, on the screen also a, the x-ray of a COVID-positive patient just to let you know that COVID is real uh, because some people still believe it's not real. I was talking to a young guy who felt there's too much emphasis on COVID. We'll talk briefly on COVID today because it's something that has affected every sector of life. Uh, so this is me in my office where I practice and that's me working in the hospital. The first advice to give is that the most important aspect of your life is your earth. So it's often said that earth is worth, earth is worth. And divine earth is possible. The Lord says in Exodus 15, 26, for I am the Lord who heals you. I am the Lord who heals you. In fact, God said, if you diligently eat the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandment and keep all his status. I will put none of the diseases on you which have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. So God is still in the business of healing his children. And we still have some people who follow the instructions of God and if you follow the instructions of God, if you cooperate with nature, uh, you can have divine earth. In Exodus 23, 25 to 26, uh, this is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. And I believe God for this uh, from time to time on a daily basis. And you shall serve the Lord your God, and you shall bless thy bread and thy water. Now we take sickness away from the midst of thee, there shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. 
the number of thy days I will fulfill. So the roles of earth, earth is acknowledged by God the Father. In fact, God gives specific instructions on what not to eat uh, to the Israelites. If you read the book of, the first five books of the Bible, the books of Moses, as they are called, a lot of specific instructions are given on what to eat and not to eat. So the focus is on not getting sick. So that's why it's often said that prevention is better than cure. So we need to focus on, on the right thing. Even Jesus also acknowledged, you know, earth. He said to them in Mark 2, 17, those who are strong and well have no need of a physician. Still talking about the importance of wellness, of being healthy. And that's why we're looking at the early Christian. So it's possible if you follow some of the instructions uh, of heaven. The definition of earth by WHO is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Some people don't have the diagnosis of disease, but they are actually not healthy. Uh, some are not healthy, even though uh, doctors can run tests on them. They may not find a specific keenness, but they are not healthy. So that's why we need to really be careful and pay attention. So I want to give us a case study. Uh, Sam, a 52-year-old man with a sudden onset of headache. And this is a catch. He described it as the worst headache of his life. So he removed his necktie because he was sweating and sat down with his head on the table. He was driven home and told to take Tylenol because that's the way we behave, especially people who come from the part of the world we come from. Uh, we don't take things serious. So his wife told him to go lie down in bed. And two hours after lying down, he woke up suddenly and asked his wife, to take him to ER. He went to coma in the ER. Yeah, you no, know, Sam's case was uh, different because there was an intervention. Something woke him up. And not everybody who experienced that favor. And that's why we need to pay attention to some symptoms and some signs. So the first one I want to talk about is a new regime, a new regime. And this is the localized enlargement of an artery caused by weakness in the arterial wall. Uh, if you see the picture, if you see the normal blood vessel, you know it should be smooth. So there are times it balloons out. And when it balloons out, uh, it, the walls are weak. So that ballooning of the, of the vessel, the arterial wall, is what we call aneurysm, just like what we have here. So, and this is common in brain and abdomen. So the problem with that is that when it balloons out, just like your, just like anything, you, you blow out, you know, after some time, it thins out and it can easily burst. So when it ruptures, it's a major problem because you can bleed you know, all the blood in your body, you can lose them. And that's the problem. And when the pressure is too much in the brain, because the brain is inside the skull and the skull cannot expand. So the pressure would damage the brain. Or if it's in the abdomen, you know, the abdomen is so big, you can take as much blood as possible until the person really bleeds out the blood in his body. Uh, you know, one may not know. So what are the, the statistics? It causes about 25,000 deaths in US yearly, 25,000. So around 30,000 brain aneurysm rupture, you know, annually, you know, resulting in death. And that's for brain. The other one is for the abdomen. The risk factors are it, it runs in family, genetic, increasing age, smoking, so high blood pressure, and some people who have what we call aortic dissection. 
the symptoms, you may be asymptomatic, so you may not know. Or if it's abdominal type, uh, if you look at your chest, below your chest, the inferior part, the lowest part of your chest, if you run the middle of your chest down there is sternum, the lower part is, the lowest part of that sternum is what we call the cyphoid process. If you go down, that's your abdomen. So pain is common in that area. Oh, I want to know about that type of pain. Is it is similar to ulcer pain? And some people actually don't have pain in the abdomen, or it could be any part of the abdomen. It can be generalized depending on how much blood the person has lost. Uh, it can also present with low back pain. Uh, some people is just back pain. That's why when you have some of these symptoms, you don't take it lightly. If it's brain, if it ruptures in the brain, there is sudden headache, and it's often described as the worst headache ever. And the person can go into coma, just like we saw in the case of uh, Sam. And talking about prostate cancer, prostate cancer, this is the most common cancer in Canada. And it is the third cause of cancer related death in men aged over 65 years. This is slowly growing, and that's one thing about prostate cancer, and produces no symptoms initially. Uh, if I may take 10 to 15 years, it's slowly growing. So risk factor advanced age can also run in family, and it's common in black folks. Symptoms, one can have urinary retention, whereby you, you have problem you know, in passing your urine or uh, a decrease in the force of urine stream. When you pee, your urine is not flowing freely. And this is a man now. And one can have back pain or there can be enlargement in the groin. Or uh, one can have constitutional symptoms. Now I want you to take note of these constitutional symptoms in cancer. These are three symptoms that have been shown to be common in people with cancer. When you have fever, night sweat, and weight loss, weight loss, which is not intentional. So those three things, night sweat, weight loss, uh, and occasionally fever. So diagnosis, digital rectal exam. Uh, most men don't like it because it's painful, but it should be done and as an adjoining test we call PSA. PSA is not that uh, reliable, but we, it can be combined with digital rectal exam. So all males from the age of 50 should have an annual digital rectal exam. And if there's a family history of prostate cancer uh, 10 years earlier, so from the age of 40, uh, one should have digital rectal exam. Then low back pain. I want to go through some cases, about 15 to 16 of them, so that we, uh, so that we can have some, uh, some information tonight. Low back pain is not the leading cause of disability worldwide. It's so common. And it's been found out that 80 to 90% is mechanical, uh, which means uh, it's just wear and tear. So five to 15% is neurogenic. One to 2% is non-mechanical spinal disorder. Two to 4% from other causes. We look for some red flags when people have low back pain. We want to know whether there is previous history of cancer. Just like you, you heard from prostate cancer, you can go to low back pain. So especially if it has spread to the spine. Then we also want to know the age. If somebody is less than 16 or greater than 50 with new onset pain, it's a red flag. So we want to investigate it. So if you've not had back pain in your life and at the age of 50 or 51, you just start with pain. You should see a doctor. Then if there is weight loss, remember the constitutional symptoms of cancer, unexplained weight loss or previous long-standing steroid use is because steroid attacks bone. 
it actually affects the density of bone. Or there is recent serious illness or recent significant infection. Then these are red flags. If you have all this, you need to watch out. You need to see a physician. Management. The back pain can be managed uh, with medications, uh, some non-medication options like uh, massage, physiotherapy, chiropractic treatment, and, and surgery. So if you have questions, please, you can put them in the chat box. Then colon cancer. The second leading cause of cancer mortality in the United States after lung cancer. So the, uh, the commonest symptoms is abdominal pain. And let me say this, I've seen, you know, as a physician and as a leader in, uh, in, in our church, I've seen a lot of people with advanced colon cancer, especially Christians, because they don't pay attention to some some of the symptoms. So the catch is that it depends on the location. If you look at your tummy or your abdomen, uh, we have the right part, we have the left side. The right-sided lesion, if it's on your right-hand side of the abdomen, is often bulky. And such cancer, they cause anemia. Because what happens is that when somebody has colon cancer, the person can easily bleed. And the problem is that your intestines, if you remember your, your biology, your intestines are hundreds of feet. So if you bleed, by the time it gets out, the stool gets out of your, uh, of your rectum or anus, you know, the blood will have mixed with the stool and you may not discover it easily, especially at the early stage. When you start to see blood in your stool, you know that uh, it's been going on for some time. That's why you see why the government is putting a lot of emphasis uh, into prevention, into some tests, which we need to take advantage of, especially in this part of the world, in Canada, where healthcare is free. The government is putting a lot of emphasis in preventing uh, some of this uh, cancer. So patient with complaints of anorexia, yeah, you just don't want to eat diarrhea, weakness or abdominal pain. Then if it's the left-sided part of your abdomen, if the location of the cancer is in the left side, uh, most of the people, because that is closer to the uh, rectum or your anus, you may see some blood or streak of blood in your stool. So risk factor age, it also runs in family. In fact, there is this uh, familiar colonic polyposis. Some people just have polyps in their intestine and they are running in family. And such people are predisposed to uh, colon cancer or inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. So now if there is past history of colon cancer, and high fat and low fiber diet. That's why we need to eat a lot of vegetables, a lot of fiber. And if you look at African diet, see that we don't take a lot of fiber. So we might need to change our diet. So that's why we're doing this early in the year so that you can add some of these changes to your uh, yearly resolution. The next one is breast cancer uh, and this is most common cancer in women. Uh, thank God for technology, for science. The five-year survival rate now is around 87%. Uh, the, the issue with all this cancer is that early diagnosis is essential. Uh, so that's why all the uh, preventive tests must be done. So I'm going to give you some that you need to make sure you do them regularly. This is what, if you are taking notes, uh, mammogram should be done every two years from the age of 50. And also from the age of 50, every two years, 
you need to do what we call fit based on colon cancer. And that is where you send your stool and they test it for blood. So from the age of 50, every two years, uh, the first one is to do fit, uh, which is the test for blood in your stool. And the second one now is to do mammogram every two years. And all these things are free in Canada. But if there is family history of breast cancer, uh, one has to start early. Risk factors uh, is commoner in female, more than, uh, more than male. That's why we're not talking about breast cancer, but breast cancer does happen in male as well. Then increasing age, increasing age, uh, as one grows older, uh, there one is susceptible. Then family history, especially first degree family. So if you have any member of your family with uh, breast cancer, you need to pay attention. That's why some people try to look at what we call BRCA1 and BRCA2, which are genes. And you can see your doctor for all this, uh, especially if there's family, or if there's history of radiation exposure. And that's why you should not be ignorant and be troubling your, your doctors for CT scan, CT scan, CT scan, which is a common thing in this part of the world. Uh, one CT scan in terms of radiation it's about 150 x-ray, 150 x-ray. So you can see, so we need to be careful with the radiation or you need to check where you work as well. Uh, and other risk factors, early menarche, you start your menstruation at early age, that's a risk factor. And late menopause, if you don't end your menstruation early. Uh, you may ask me what age, uh, if over 50, you need to check it. Or if you're on hormone replacement therapy. Uh, so you need to, or drinking alcohol, or taking uh, birth control at another age. So you're talking about uh, maybe 45, 50 and above. Symptoms, uh, it comes with breast lump. That's why every woman must do breast exam. In fact, real research now has been said that you know your breast, so you should be the one to discover the lump, which means the onus is on you to make sure you, you check out your lump from time to time. Check the size, the shape, and the appearance. Uh, you look at yourself in the mirror and you use your right hand on your left breast, your left hand on your, and you just move it right. See if there are changes in the skin or see whether the nipple is inverted or if there are changes. Then the constitutional symptoms we mentioned if, uh, before, uh, weight loss, night sweat. And the sixth point, I told you I'm going to about 16, depression. Depression. We live in in a society under stress. In fact, COVID-19 pandemic has put a lot of pressure on human. Uh, statistics says almost one in six adults reported needing mental health care last year. In fact, uh, COVID-19 has increased that. And male to female ratio is one to two. Uh, it's, it's common in female. And in this temperate weather, this part of the world, depression is even commoner. So now it, uh, uh, you can see that depression is on the increase. The onset may occur at any age, but average age, average age is in the mid 20. And people with chronic illness and stress increase the risk. In fact, people with uh, cancer, also, people with thyroid problem like hypothyroidism, uh, they tend to uh, to have depression. So, what are the symptoms that are? We look for five out of ten symptoms. You look for sleep. The person might be sleeping too much or not sleeping at all, or loss of interest in activities, guilty feeling, whereby you just feel worthless. Uh, you just feel guilty unnecessarily and low energy sorry low low energy and some people they become uh, 
a, a, a retable, uh, some are not eating well, uh, that affects their appetite, loss of appetite. Uh, so difficulty with concentration. Also, it affects memory, whereby there is low, low memory, especially short-term memory. Uh, irritability, those are the symptoms of depression. And some people have what we call suicidal ideation or suicidal thought, and that's a severe form of depression. But some people still have it. They just want to end their life. Uh, they just feel hopeless. And like I always say, once a man loses hope, uh, it means the end is near. We shouldn't lose our hope as believers. Uh, so there are different types of depression, a lot of them, but just to highlight a few of them. Uh, seasonal depression, like I said, this is uh, in, in winter, some people have depression. Maybe you've even been to some people's offices and you see them putting on a lamp because that's the way it's treated. Uh, a lamp uh, to maybe you may not you may be asking why are they putting on a lamp uh, in the maybe in the office it might be because of uh, seasonal depression or mood disorder due to a medical condition uh, like I told you people with cancer uh, people with hypothyroidism or normal bereavement yeah you know, if you lose a loved one uh, you can actually have depression. Like, you know, the normal bereavement, there are five stages. Uh, depression is the last stage, whereby you have denial, anger, agony, and you have, depression is the second to the last, depression before you accept the, you know, the eventuality. So depression is, can be people with bereavement. Erectile dysfunction. Erectile dysfunction uh, is, and this is when, the, uh, uh, some people call it impotence or so sexual dysfunction characterized by the inability to develop or maintain an erection. And this is for married people uh, during sexual performance. Uh, this may affect 40% of men over 40, over the age of 40. And the catch here, where I bring this up is that up to 95% of cases are treatable. So, if your bedroom is quiet, uh, there is treatment. It can be treated. 95% of cases are treatable. Treatment, oral treatment, we have a lot of multivitamins like vitamin V, which they call Viagra. Uh, a lot of them like that. We have Cialis, Levitra. So they are all there, a lot of vitamins and some non-oral treatment. So science has really, you know, gone where some people have injection, some have some devices. So treatment is possible. And we thank God for Pfizer. I'm going to share a joke later when I talk about, <laughs> remind me, when I talk about COVID-19 vaccine, I'll, I'll relate it to vitamin V, Viagra. So infertility, which is, my number eight, uh, there's inability of a couple to conceive after one year of regular intercourse you know, without contraception. The causes, and this is also very important because of the culture where we come from, because we always attribute it to female causes. You know, it's one third is female cause, one third male cause and one third combined. So it's a responsibility of both male and female to, you know, to really go out and find out the cause. So 30% female, 30% male and combined. So if you are a male, avoid excessive scrotite, excessive use of hot tub or sauna. And there are some, med uh, some medications once you avoid, like calcium channel blocker, anabolic steroids. You know, the steroid that some people use for you know, to gain weight, uh, we need to avoid them. Female, there's declining female fertility after age 35. Uh, somebody said, if you, if, you, if you have delayed in getting married, uh, maybe after the age of 30, you can actually, science has gone 
you know, to a level whereby you can bank your eggs. You can bank your eggs uh, because of situation like this. And fully acid, one can take fully acid one milligram daily. And one should reduce weight. So then to both couples, uh, they need to check their ovulation period and, and meet every one to two days and avoiding recreational drugs. Okay, let's number nine, hypertension. Hypertension. So I don't want to talk too much about dead bedroom, but let's go to hypertension. As a new diagnosis of high blood pressure, it used to be 140 over 90, but it's been changed to 130 over 80. So if your BP is based on three measurements separated by two weeks time, if it's over 130 over 80. So that's why you need to go and check your BP. And we also live in a nice community that every pharmacy has a BP machine, if you cannot afford one. But everyone should have a BP machine at all, every family. Because high blood pressure is very, very common. And it's often called the silent killer, the silent killer. And one thing about high blood pressure is 95% of cases, we don't know the cause. Uh, but risk factors, family history of hypertension or heart disease. And let me say this is very, very common in people of African descent. Uh, people would take a lot of salt and those who smoke or advanced age or obesity. Blacks are affected more, than, more often than white. And a lot of people are dying in their sleep and we say it's an attack from home. Uh, many of them are dying from stroke. It's not an attack from home. We over-spiritualize some of these things and God has given us knowledge in order to deal with some of this issue. So please get a BP cough and check your blood pressure uh, from time to time. So blood pressure elevation is asymptomatic until complication develops. People don't know. And I've seen thousands of people who don't know. Some of them just come, you check their blood pressure and it's over the roof. So we need to really uh, put a lot of attention into that, especially people of our origin. So uh, there are a lot of treatment. We have non-pharmacological treatment, lifestyle modification, whereby you exercise, of course, yeah, yeah, relaxation, weight control, salt restriction, physical activity, DASH diet, which is diet against systolic hypertension. And what does that entail? So you take a lot of fruit and vegetables, uh, like bananas, uh, oranges, relax the uh, alcohol reduction. Of... Then cardiac infarction, my number 10. Uh, this is chest pain at rest. And it's usually described as a retrosternal tightness or squeezing sensation. Or sometimes it could be a dull ache. And the problem is people with diabetes, they don't usually have uh, uh, serious pain. Uh, it could be a dull ache. And this pain can radiate to your left shoulder, can radiate to your jaw, or it can radiate to your arm or neck. Other symptoms are sweating, weakness, dizziness, nausea. Some people have vomiting and abdominal discomfort. So this is common also in this part of the world. And you must know it, uh, chest pain. So chest pain is, is very, very common. I will also advise you go to your doctor and have an ECG. What do I mean by ECG? Uh, that's your heart tracing. And this is done in the lab where your blood is taken. So everybody should have an ECG, which should form a baseline. You should carry it in your wallet in case anything happen and they need, maybe you are having uh, some, some chest pain and they need to compare uh, to your baseline. So everybody should have at least one ECG, which you should 
carry in your wallet. Then vaccination, let's go to vaccination. Uh, it's interesting that about 5,000 people still die of tetanus every year. Uh, so you should have tetanus shot every 10 years, every 10 years. Uh, it's giving from family doctor's office in Canada from the age of 14 to 16. So you know, some people, parents come and say, oh, my, my child got immunization at school. You know that the person has not got tetanus. So if from the age of 14 to 16, you, you need to take your child to your family physician. So you now start counting your 10 years from then, but depending on or when you came to Canada, make sure you, and what the way it's done is to write it down or they can give you a sticker which you put on your driver's license every 10 years. Then for people of African origin, I would recommend meningococcal vaccine because we've seen, at least I have a case of a friend who lost uh, a sibling who traveled from Europe to Nigeria and caught meningitis and she died. So it would be nice to also get a meningitis injection. Then hepatitis A and B, you can. And all these things can be, you can test your hepatitis A and B. Uh, you can test the immunity level to see if you have immunity or not. Because hepatitis A, for example, is transmitted like typhoid, which is fecora root. So that's feces of infected individual if it gets to your mouth. And that is so easy. Even if you get to, maybe you go to Africa from their water, from food, flies, or even if you shake hands or you touch something, even the car door, you can easily, and you put your hand, you didn't use hand sanitizer, you put your hand in your mouth or you bite your nail. So it's so, it's so common. That's why a lot of people have typhoid. So it's the same way hepatitis A and all these things you can. You can check if you are immune to hepatitis A or hepatitis B. Then herpes, which is shingles, if you are over 50, or if one has underlying symptoms, one should, underlying illness, one should get it. Uh, you know, science is really, really exciting. The problem with shingles is almost, every, I can tell you, uh, nine out of 10 people on the line today, uh, if not more, have had uh, chicken pox before, chicken pox. And when you have chicken pox, the virus is dormant in your ganglion, uh, uh, which is your nerve endings. And so anytime they can flare up. When they flare up later, that's when you have shingles. And they can flare up if you're under stress, like people are under stress now because of COVID-19. So we see more shingles. And you can get this injection, uh, this EPIS uh, injection vaccination to prevent that. If you have shingles, if it's not treated within 72 hours, you stand the risk of having post hepatic neuralgia, which is pain in your nerve endings. That's why you see some people who are drug addicts or they are into drugs today because of serious pain. And this is serious pain because the pain is actually real from the nerve. I see a lot of people with post hepatic neuralgia. I've seen a lot of them. It's very, very difficult to treat. So that's why it's good to prevent. Prevention is better than kill. And if you're over 65 seniors, you should go for pneumonia shot, shingles and flu shot. Uh, pneumonia shot, there are two of them now. We have Pneumovax and Prevna. If you take the two, you, you, you don't need to take any, anything again. You are immune for life. That's what we found out. And depending on which one you take first, if you take Prevna first, two months later or eight weeks minimum, you can take Nemovax. If you take Nemovax first, one year later you take Prevna, then Shingus, then push -ups. So let's talk about COVID-19 uh, immune booster. And this is what I take uh, daily and which I want to encourage us to take. Uh, zinc, two tablets, twice daily, vitamin C, two tablets, twice daily. There's a combination of zinc and vitamin C if you want to reduce the number of tablets. 
And why I like vitamin C and zinc combination is because they are lozenges, they dissolve in your tongue. These are good for immunity. And vitamin D, you need about 1,000 units to 2,000 units. The reason is that because of the color of our skin, I'm talking about Africans now, you don't really absorb uh, vitamin D uh, unlike uh, Caucasian. And more so, we are now in temperate region where there is minimal sunlight. You don't even absorb it well from sunlight. And now we also have minimal sunlight. So you need to really take vitamin D. So I want to recommend if there is take home message, please take vitamin D every day, uh, including your children. Your children would take like 400 units, where an adult would take 1,000 units to 2,000 units. There's betadine spray, which you can spray into your throat uh, three times a day. Uh, these have been shown to boost your immune during this period. Then diet, I want to recommend you drink a lot of water, eight to 10 glasses a day, if possible. Avoid juice, refined carbohydrates, uh, avoid beef, pork. You know, red meat is not good. Take more of goat, fish, chicken, that's not good. Eat a lot of fruit and vegetables, avoid pastries. Just a recommendation. All this thing will pay off in future. Every day I remove something from my diet. Uh, just giving, being vulnerable now, I love fried plantain. I stopped that two years ago uh, and I thank God. Uh, this is what I used to eat every day, but God gave me the grace to, to stop it two years ago. Rest. Rest is important. It's also part of nature. You see that on the seventh day, God rested. He demonstrated it. And God told Moses to make it a law because he knows that men will not do it. So I have relaxation techniques, massage. Massage is good for you, even if you're a Christian. Uh, go for massage therapy. The best sermon I preached in 2019, I preached it after I came out of a massage therapy on a Sunday morning. My wife and I uh, took it, uh, we went for a wedding anniversary, we went to Niagara. So we had massage on that Sunday morning. That was the best message people said I preach in that year. So massage is good for you. Then aromatherapy, ice or warm bath, all these things, they relax you. Exercise, and exercise your mind, exercise your body, walking, swimming, gardening, you know, sleep well, uh, an average of six to eight hours a day. It's good for you. Turn off all gadgets and tune into God's word and prayer from time to time. You know, uh, just get out of all this distraction. The distractions are too many in 21st century. Uh, from time to time, you must turn off the gadget, turn off the social media, turn off CNN, BBC and the likes, just to concentrate on God's word and pray. I want to talk about domestic abuse because uh, we also see this in, uh, in Christian homes. And this is control of someone's mind, emotions, and what's in their body. And it's on the increase because of the lockdown. And the reason is that People who are always out there, outside the house, they are staying more at home because of the restriction. People are just on each other's face. They can't really tolerate themselves. So that's what, we, and this isolation is causing what we call cabin fever. Uh, people are becoming restless. So uh, as a result of that, we see more abuse. Could be in words, could be physical, could be emotional. Uh, and, so, and also disruption of routines uh, is making people to get into this. So the abuser is still fearing the victim using intimidation, coercion, and threats. And they tend to isolate you from friends, family, and even your, your co-workers because they bully, they control physical abuse, control your money, movement, decision-making, 
So you need to watch out. And if you see any trace of it, please cry out. Uh, don't keep it. People have lost their lives. And you too, uh, who is not experiencing this, you should be equipped to be able to recognize the sign. Uh, if you see somebody in church or your friend uh, giving excuses for injuries, just in marks on face or on body, or it could be child abuse too, people are abusing their children as well. So when you see some of these uh, injuries, please investigate. Or you see change in personality, somebody that is outgoing out withdrawn, uh, you are wondering what's going on. Or the person is not behaving, not calling you, it's not behaving like you used to know the person, you need to, uh, you need to investigate. Or if children are not showing up, or your friends, co-workers are not showing up for work, school, church, for no clear reason. Uh, maybe you don't hear from church members, please, let's be each other's uh, keeper. Let's reach out. Some people may be going through abuse. And I want to talk about wishes, and I love this uh, because I love to think outside the box. Uh, uh, I love, I love this, uh, especially because of the mentality of today's Christian. We don't plan for tomorrow. We are like the son of the prophet of Second Kings, chapter four. You know, after his death, the creditor came to the wife. They wanted to take away the children, but thank God for the woman. She cried out to Elisha. So what do I mean by wishes? Please discuss your desires uh, with your family. That's why uh, dinner table is still good. Uh, you should eat together. You know, discuss your hope, your longing. You know, you never know. I lost my brother last year, uh, June, at the age of 49. And it happened suddenly. Uh, I spoke to him uh, within 24 hours of speaking to him, he died. So your wishes matter, please discuss them with your, uh, with your family. We call advanced care directives, what do you want uh, at the last minute? Do you really want uh, uh, what we call CPR? Do you want resuscitation? If anything should happen, do you want them to put the plug? You know, you need to discuss some of these things. And if possible, uh, write it down or share it with your family members. Then have a will, have a will. It's very, very important. Do you know that if, if, a, if a couple doesn't have a will and the couple should die, you no. Know, uh, the government takes over the estate. Everything you work for, you don't want the government to take, take, take it over. So have a will, and that is part of your wishes, your desire. Uh, life insurance. Don't say, I used to be like that uh, as a young Christian. Say, I, I, I pay my tithe. My life is secured. But thank God, God opened my eyes. Uh, so life insurance is very, very important. Uh, so if there's any take home, please write it down. Have a live insurance if you are working. Critical insurance, critical illness, because you don't know. We don't wish to be sick, but some of these things are good and they should be documented. Uh, it's very, very important. Then set to scores. Don't fight people. Uh, don't fight people. Uh, make peace. Make peace with people because you don't know. And share memories. Share memories. Have fun with family, with friends. Don't say, I don't need holiday. After all, I'm relaxing. This is lockdown. No, the problem, the point is you want to have memories. Uh, to overcome grief is tough. You know, it's when you talk about the memory of the person, the memory you share together. You know, it really helps. So you want to have memories. From time to time, I ask my children, what will you, remi what will you remember about me? And when I discover what they are saying, don't measure up, you know, I, I, I improve. So let's share memories with family, go on vacation. You don't need to spend much to create memories. Uh, visit friends, have fun, 
and establish your legacy. Uh, legacy is important. Is it the legacy of faith? I don't say this this time. It's very, very important. You know, that's why the Bible talks about Asian landmarks. You know, establish the legacy. What do you want people to know you for? You no. Know, uh, you know, how do you want people to define you? Important. And 17, coronavirus vaccines. I believe we have people on the line today who have taken these vaccines. And the reason I'm bringing this up is uh, I'm really, really uh, disappointed with the way Christians have taken this. They've taken it too far. They've, you know, they are supporting all this conspiracy uh, theory. And let me say this, anything that is novel, people will kick against it. And the reason this conspiracy theory is gaining ground is because we're in the information world. You know, it's so easy to spread information today. Uh, so don't listen to those conspiracy theory. These vaccines are real. They are not injecting you with anything to control you. Those things are just part of the conspiracy theory. And let me also say this, uh, as a primary care physician, we still have a lot of people who don't even take immunization because of, uh, of because they are just against it. Uh, so I want you to know that uh, conspiracy theory will not die down. It, people will keep talking about it. God has given wisdom to man and science will get us out of this hole. Uh, this COVID-19 pandemic. So there are three common vaccines now by Pfizer, uh, Moderna, and there's one from Oxford. Uh, so the difference is the, the Pfizer and the Moderna, they are using new technology. We even say it's a new technology, but the technology has been there actually for about 30 years. They've been using this technology in cancer research. Uh, in cancer research. It's just as the first time they are using it to develop a vaccine. And the Oxford one is using the known, known uh, viral uh, vector. So let me show you some of the, uh, the, 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 the differences in this, uh, in this uh, vaccine. I've added the fourth one is the one in Russia, but uh, yeah, so if you look at it, the Oxford one is viral vector, and there are two doses. In fact, it's interesting that each one of them is two doses, and the effectiveness is about 90%. And this one can be kept in the regular fridge, uh, and the price is quite very uh, low. And uh, Moderna one uh, is, that's the one that has been given now, uh, and the Pfizer one. 95% uh, effective as well. But the problem is the storage, minus 20 degree. And the price is about $33. And the Pfizer one is also 95% effective. And the, the, the problem is the storage. That one can be, can be stored in minus 70 uh, degree. Uh, centigrade. And of course, the one from <laughs> the one from uh, Russia. But let me share the joke. Uh, the joke that I got today, which is very interesting, is our faith in the Pfizer vaccine. Don't forget they make Viagra. If they can raise the dead, they can save the living. If they can raise the dead, they can save the living. Uh, Quite, quite hilarious. So this is the last one I want to talk about today, uh, parenting, parenting. Uh, I try to cover all aspects uh, of life so that you can live healthy. Don't forget, health is not merely the absence of disease. You know, uh, so parenting. So as parents, we must model, we must show the pattern uh, to our children. Titus 2, 7 to 8 says, In all things, show thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. 
sound speech that cannot be condemned. So we need to watch our conduct, watch our speech, watch what we do. Then 2 Timothy 1, 5, uh, Paul wrote to his protege and said, when I caught to remembrance, the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which were first in thy grandmother, Louis, and thy mother, Eunice, I'm persuaded that in thee also. You see the, you know, the way that faith, you know, goes in the, in the generation from his grandmother, Louis, and his mother. Something is passed down from generation to generation. Louis showed the pattern. Eunice caught it, and Timothy also caught it. Then as parents, we should train. Apart from modeling, we should also train. Deuteronomy 4, 9 says, Only take it to thyself and keep thyself diligently. Lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy son's son. So we have the responsibility of training. Genesis 18, 19 says, and this is God boasting about Abraham, for I know him that he will command his children and his household at time, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. So every child is a biological material. Turn it, you know, we can turn them into finished products. You know, I love this quote. One can be tall and fit for basketball, but if not trained, it will be tough for nothing. So we need to train our children, the responsibilities on us. So train up a child, Proverbs 22 says, says and the way you should go. And when it's old, you will not depart from it. So my take home messages uh, as I get to my conclusion because of time, uh, total cancer incidence is reduced by daily use of multivitamins in men age 50 or older through research. So get into multivitamins. Uh, even as a pastor, I take multivitamins on a daily basis. And it has helped me. Uh, you know, uh, we fate all these things and at the same time we suffer. And so I used to have, you know, just body elbow pain, body pain. So when I started taking multivitamins, I started it during this COVID period. All the pains are gone. I started taking vitamin D, multivitamins on a daily basis. The melatonin is effective against jet lag. Melatonin, it's also effective, you know, uh, to overcome every form of sleeplessness. And you can get, you can put it on your tongue, you can dissolve, and you can buy this over the counter. So anytime you travel to Africa or you travel across continent, uh, you can take it. Uh, exercise is still profitable, just like Paul wrote to Timothy. And fully acid, five milligram, should be taken daily, three months before conception. If you are planning a family, uh, you can take one milligram. In fact, one milligram of it is in multivitamins. Uh, then practice the bat, which is rest. And have a family physician. Don't say it doesn't matter. You know, we are so privilege in Canada to have free health care and try to do annual medical checkup. It's, it's important. And if you are traveling outside North America, consult a travel specialist. It's, this is also crucial. We don't do this. Uh, uh, I've spoken to some friends, some people who feel, oh, they can pray. Uh, you know, it's because you don't see uh, some of this issue. We see them. And we know that you know uh, people are really dying of, of ignorance, out of ignorance. That's why the Bible says, "My people perish for lack of knowledge." Then have an ECG or echo or stress test. Uh, stress test is important, especially if you are getting to fifty. When I turned fifty, I intentionally I did a colonoscopy and I put the picture on my Facebook wall. If you see the kind of question people are asking, ah, what is colonoscopy? It is something they could have just Google. You know, uh, some of these things are important that we do them. Prevention is better than kill. Check your eye pressure yearly. And I want to encourage us, please go to an optometrist next week and check your eye pressure. Glaucoma is also common in black folks. Then have a will. 
critical illness and life insurance. So in my conclusion, there are Paul wrote in Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. And Paul said, all things. He didn't say a few things. So if you want to make changes uh, from today to live healthy as a Christian, it's possible. You can change the habit, it's possible. Uh, when you want to break an habit, this is what research has told us. There are five stages. Pre-contemplation, when you are not thinking about it. Then contemplation, maybe you start thinking about it. Then that leads to preparation. Then you take action and you try to maintain it. And Paul is saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know, tonight, I hope I've been able to stir you up, to move you from pre-contemplation to contemplation. Maybe there are some habits you need to change. Maybe you uh, are like me. Uh, we need to change some dietary habit. Uh, you just need to start preparing towards it. Your preparation can include prayer, uh, setting up a goal, maybe two weeks go, three weeks, four weeks. And you can do it with the help of the Holy Spirit. So the power of God. Today in my DDRS, I spoke about uh, anointing. Anointing is there, but you also need self-determination, purpose of mind. And you need some men, helpers of destiny. Uh, some people that can be around you who can help you when you want to uh, make those changes. And you need professionals at times when all these things don't work. So thanks for listening. So we'll take some questions. Thank you, sir, for that wonderful uh, session. Um, I'd like to encourage everybody to, you can still post your questions if you haven't already. Um, sir, there's, a, there's one question here. In, in relation to brain aneurysms, uh, can you throw some light on moya moya as a possible cause too? Uh, what is it and how does it come? Brain aneurysm? Yeah, in some people, we don't even know uh, what, uh, what is the cause. Like I said, it can be genetic, it can be due to high blood pressure, can be due to some underlying condition. So you just need to uh, equip yourself with some of this information. When you're having a dick, that is the worst headache. Don't just take Tylenol or Advil. Uh, it must be checked out. Thank you for that, sir. Uh, there's another question here. Um, Pastor, my reading last week was 135.85. My friend says it's normal uh, with my age. Is this normal, please? No, I told you the new definition is 13080. But you don't need to go into medication immediately. That's why we spoke about the non-pharmacological uh, treatment, whereby you reduce your salt to one to two grams a day. Uh, and if you check the salt intake, if you check the, the amount of salt, in your fries from um, McDonald's or KFC. It's actually more than two grams. So we eat too much salt. So what you need to do is to first reduce your salt and get into activity exercise. It's recommended 150 minutes a week, an average of 30 minutes, maybe a day for five days a week. Then you can do meditation and change your diet, eat a lot of fruit, vegetables, relaxation, techniques, you know, all those things may work and may help you and sleep better. You can use melatonin or just take some rest. Thank you for that, sir. Um, there's another question here. Can we get the Betadine spray over the counter? Yeah, it's over the counter. Uh, if you go to any pharmacy, you have it. And it prevents against sore throat as well. So it's a good thing to have at home. Thank you, sir. Another question here, um, sir, can you comment more about spray? What type and how to use it? The better day spray? Which spray? It's the not specified this, here. The, if it's better day spray, you use it, you put it into your mouth, into your throat. But if it's inhalers for uh, those who have asthma, uh, so depending on the type of device you are using, 
Yeah, that one also is, you know, use it into your mouth. It's interesting that some people use those inhaler like a spray. Uh, that's why a good doctor will find out how the patient is using it. It's been found out that there are some people put it under their armpit and they spray their armpit and it think that's a way to use an inhaler. And if it's steroid spray that you use for uh, either for allergy, that one goes to your nose and you know, depending on. Um, most of this spray, the, there is, uh, if you look at the leaflet, it's just that we don't read, we don't, if you look at the leaflet, you can see, uh, you know, they put a diagram, they put out, you can use that. And you can even ask the pharmacy, that's also their, one of their roles, is to show you how to use some of these products. Thank you, sir. Another question here, which vaccine is best for people with uh, um, health issues? Is it COVID vaccines or that's a general yes, in question. reference to if in reference COVID. to COVID? Yeah, anyone yes. the, anyone our government is giving us is good. Uh, currently, the government has both, so you can take any one of them. But don't listen to all this conspiracy theory. It's as if we Christians are not really uh, in, you know informed, intelligent, who buy into all these lies. Please, please, there's so much knowledge in the world. Uh, we should really applaud our scientists for coming up with such uh, effective vaccine. So anyone that you can take, please take it, it's safe. And we have people who have taken it uh, on the line today, I believe, yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, please advise on healthy fasting. Okay, fasting is good. But depending on your, uh, on your medical conditions, uh, you may need to, uh, to watch out. But the most important thing when you fast, I know I would damage some ignorance now. We've been told don't drink water. Water is good for you. Uh, fasting is a way you can detoxify your body and you need water to really help you in that detoxification process. So that's why when you smile, yeah, you fast, you know, everything around you smell, your armpit, your mouth, your breathing, your poo, your urine. And so if you drink water, which is natural, the more you drink, the better for you. So, but if you have medical conditions like diabetes, high blood pressure, you are pregnant, you are breastfeeding, you need to consult your doctor. You need to be guided on how to fast. Uh, some people have also fasting for as a form of dieting. Of course, it's working because when you look at issue of weight, although gene contributes in, in a big way, uh, but it's been found out that diet is one of the major uh, corporates. And that's why gastric bypass surgery or lab band, where they tie something around your stomach to reduce the size of your stomach. That's why they are working very well, because they reduce the amount of food that you take. And that's the way they work. So food plays a big role. That's why people are talking about intermittent fasting now. They, 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 they eat for eight hours and they fast for 16 hours. So they just eat within a, a window. You can eat between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. And you don't eat anything between 6 p.m. at night and 10 a.m. And it's working for some people. And of course, the type of food you eat is also important. So, so uh, fasting is good. You can use it to, uh, to control your weight. You can use it to detoxify. And of course, it's a good spiritual exercise. And Jesus said, this kind go at not. He said, by praying and fasting. Uh, so if you talk about fasting in our CCG, uh, because we're starting our fasting on Monday, uh, we fast from midnight to 6 p.m. Uh, midnight to 6 p.m. And yeah, you can drink, you can drink water. Some people ask me, can I drink tea or coffee? Yes, you can. Uh, and you can drink water. Thank you. 
Thank you, sir. We have two more, two more entries. Um, thank you for the interesting session, sir. Can we get zinc, a COVID immune booster over the counter? Yes, everything is over the counter, yeah. And then- You can buy what them, but you don't need prescription. Our last question here, sir. What is the best way to take the BP drugs during fasting? The best way, yeah, you take it when you break. You can also take your medication uh, during fasting. Uh, but it's just that there are some medications that you need to watch out. You don't take any time uh, you are not eating. There are some groups of medication when you are not eating. Let's say you are having diarrhea, you are vomiting, you are not eating. There are some medication you should avoid. But if you do eat in the evening, if you are not doing a marathon fast, uh, if you eat in the evening, you break your fast at 6 p.m. You can take your medication that time or before bed time. So you can still take your medication. But there are some medication you don't want to take when you are doing some marathon because of dehydration. There are some medication, their function is to, you know, is to take away fluid from your body. And if you are not really eating, uh, that can create a problem. So we have a list of medication. Uh, if you check your Google and you type sad man, sad man <laughs> i don't know why they use that sad man yeah you will see the list of the medication uh, that will come up uh, the medication you should avoid when you either when you are sick or when you when you like some group of medication some for diabetes some for high blood pressure issue diuretics some of them that you should avoid so if I say that, you may not understand them, but you may need to ask your doctor. But if you are taking that group of medication, uh, you may need to talk to your doctor. Thank you very much, sir. Um, we've come to the end of today's session. Uh, I'd like to highlight a few announcements and then I'll ask Pastor to give us a closing prayer. Um, our service is going to be uh, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m on our YouTube page or on Facebook, please make sure you're on there and share with friends and with family. Um, we have prayer every day at, uh, on our conference call uh, line from 6 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Um, on our Tuesday, um, Bible study resumes this Tuesday on Zoom from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, please stay tuned for more announcements uh, at, at tomorrow's service. I'll hand over to Pastor to give us the closing prayer. Okay. Thank you, Tamidi. And I want to thank all the uh, listeners. Thank you for tuning in. I also want to encourage you to follow me on YouTube. I have PYD, Pastor in Kadada, on YouTube channel. I do release a daily prescription that will bless your soul. Uh, just for about two minutes a day, I want you to follow and I know that the Lord will enrich you. Thank you. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for today. We give you praise. You are a good God. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to come together to share knowledge with one another. Father, we pray you will keep us safe, even in this pandemic. Lord, you will transform our mind. Lord, you will heal our bodies. You will grant us wisdom, Lord, to do the right things at all times. Father, we appreciate you. Lord, we honor you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, stay safe. God bless you.